My name is Scott Torrance. I'm the Director of Landscape Architecture at Scott Torrance Landscape Architect, a uh, division of four. Started in 2011, 2012, uh, ZAS contacted us and right off the bat the thing that was key to the project is that we had to work in a full BIM environment. Every consultant. This project, the Birch Mill Centre, had a very, very ambitious schedule in terms of start to finish date and really no plan B to fall back on if the building wasn't ready. So as we started to work with the construction manager for the project, we realized that BIM could also be used for off-site manufacture and assembly of pieces. The use of BIM allowed us really to finalize the, the design at an early stage. It allowed us to also prefabricate a, a lot of crucial components. And having those components prefabricated allowed us to accelerate the installation and it allowed us to hit the, uh, the, the fast track schedule. So, so BIM was, was of immense importance on this project. We cut back on the schedule by about two months and on a 24 month schedule, overall schedule, which is fast track to begin with, that's quite remarkable. Our first study that we did for an existing facility was our first foyer. There was no building permits, no construction. It was all an analytical tool for existing buildings to figure out how we can reduce our, our energy, our carbon footprint perhaps, uh, and create opportunities for expanding space for students and so on. So that was a way to illustrate to the university that there are ways to look at uh, planning design in a forward way that is using much more integrated ways. So that study, for example, which would have required somewhere between, I would say, f four to six different consultants, we used one. We used one that used BIM to do energy uh, analysis, uh, microclimate analysis, hydrology, uh, opportunities for space, expanding space, all done under one team using BIM. So uh, that I think was the real, the real catalyst and the real kind of eye-opener I think for a lot of people at the university that there are some benefits to this, you know. And that's the story. That's where we started and went to the robotics pavilion. I feel great when I see this building. You know, I think this is a real testament to a teamwork and collaboration. That was really the overarching theme that prevailed on this project from the very outset and I think it's one of the key success factors. To be working constantly in a three-dimensional environment where the, the design is becoming more and more complex all the time as you move through the design process, but to be able to, to build, start building it and always check back in. And we can then look for errors in the in the project and correct them. And we can see it the way it would be built if, if the contractor followed our drawings at that stage. So we can see things popping out, conduits popping out of the ground, uh, insulation sticking out of the ground where it shouldn't because the grading isn't quite there, or surfaces not meeting each other uh, properly. And that's really about coordination. That's why working in a complete BIM environment is so fantastic. It's a very, very interesting tool to actually bring people together because those models as they're developed, all need to fit together. They all need to fit together. So the engineers are have a model, we would have a model, the landscape architect would have a model, and ultimately they all need to kind of come together and morph together as one seamless model that can be used for you know, construction and operation. It's an enabler to work together to integrate ideas from everyone in such a way. It's fluid. It's real time and is a great catalyst for collaboration like nothing else. And also what we found, which I was surprised about, which was an interesting um, benefit of working in a BIM environment was the approvals process, municipal approvals. For example, we had a meeting with City of Toronto staff who were reviewing all of our drawings as we were um, attempting to get our municipal site plan approval to build the project. Uh, this is well before building permit applications, so the project is still in flux a little bit in terms of its design. Uh, there's still opportunity to change things, but we were up at a meeting and we just had a wireframe version of, of the building and landscape open. And just one thing that jumps out is when we were there with everybody, um, municipal staff, one of the um, urban designers at the City of Toronto said, you know, this guard that you have this glass guard, do you really need this thing? Because, you know, she didn't like it. And, and, and I didn't like it either when I saw it. And I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have st stood out if it wasn't th part of a three-dimensional model that everybody could look at. If it was a traditional set of black line drawings, which we 
would typically submit. It would have been a little dashed line, a little dotted line. Nobody would have even noticed it. So those kind of changes, you know, that change alone was, um, you know, I think uh, almost $100,000 of savings of something we didn't need. It didn't help the project. It didn't, um, it didn't improve the appearance of it. It wasn't something the owner needed. So uh, it was great and we could all see it. So things like that stand out when you're working in this kind of environment. We didn't realize it at the time, but uh, as we started to uh, develop the design using BIM, that the, the architecture, the design of the building was going to become quite complex um, from a geometrical perspective, from a design perspective. In particular, the building envelope, the building facade, was one of the more complex technical aspects to resolve. And we have used BIM on many, many occasions before, but we hadn't used it to the degree that we could actually look at it from a geometric resolution side of things. The, the outside of the building was, was uh, mapped uh, using uh, LiDAR scanning, and, and that those tools were used to uh, prefabricate large elements of the exterior. And so seeing that come together, uh, for me, was very satisfying because it's, it's the ultimate combination of, of kind of art and science. BIM was, uh, I would say, was a, certainly a, a great tool for us to not just conceptualize the building, but actually to realize it and to rationalize it to get the best possible result and to, to make sure that we would um, that we were creating not a, a custom building but with a kit of parts that could be used and could be simply manufactured and not have to be one of only. So for example, there's only three triangles on the facade of the building. We have these complex uh, surfaces, three-dimensional surfaces, walls, retaining walls, paving surfaces. So all these things would have been very challenging to design in a traditional two-dimensional method. The, the first element you see upon approaching the building is the facade. The facade came together in a very, very interesting way. It was very demanding technically, but in, in order to, to deliver this on time and on schedule and, and uh, to budget into the um, level of quality that was required, we, we actually did use some cutting-edge management techniques and, and, and tools. I really like the form of the building, there's no doubt. And, and people misunderstand the form of this building because when you actually look at it, it's almost kind of a, a square with rounded corners. But when you look at it obliquely, it looks like a, a kind of elliptical building. And I like the fact that it's scaleless. It looks like a scaleless building. And then people are not quite sure how big it is. Is it two stories? Is it four stories? I like the fact that it keeps people guessing. I'm really proud of the fact that the students are, have embraced it the way they have. And if you go out there at any time of day, you'll see this building has a real buzz to it, a real livelihood to it. Uh, the exterior uh, is like super interesting. Like It catches your eye. It kind of makes you feel like you're in a more updated school, you know, and you're in a new place. Sometimes when you're in this building, you don't even realize you're in York. You just feel like you're in a different little place, you know. It looks very modern, so a lot of York's, I guess, buildings, they don't look so modern, but when I look around here, it's very modern. It's the kind of thing I'd expect to see if I was downtown. This building in particular is probably a pride of many communities. I would even extend it as far as the city of Toronto. It's one of those great architectural buildings um, that is just doing things differently. We didn't hesitate when um, to get student buy-in and student input. We built an engineering building that's not a block, right? It's beautiful, there's glass, it's delicate and sturdy. So I think it's a pride of Toronto, not just the York and York's community. I would say that this is the catalyst for the future management and operations of buildings at York University. This will set the tone for all new buildings. So on all new buildings, we're following the same protocol. So I would say in a number of years, we will have 10% of our university, let's say close to a million square feet of space, all planned and designed, constructed, conceived, and implemented, maintained and operated in a BIM environment. That's quite a bit. For us, BIM is, is the way of the future. Um, I look back at how construction used to be done, and um, it, it's, uh, we, we stumbled, we struggled without BIM, and so for me it's hard to imagine doing projects of any degree of complexity without BIM. Uh, BIM solves a lot of problems for us. It, it requires you to put a lot of time and effort in at the front end, but I believe that time and effort at the front end saves you so much time downstream. You're resolving problems early, 
In construction, if you were to find conflicts during the works, it takes a lot of effort, time and effort, to resolve those conflicts. Probably um, an order of magnitude greater than it does if you find them early, when you can just change lines on a piece of paper. So, so BIM is, is so important to our business. I think we're only now starting to harness the, the, the benefits. There's no reason why we at York University and this campus could not actually leapfrog uh, many other countries around the world in this area. So I, I think this is why um, a lot of folks around the country have taken note and uh, want to know how we can help them get started. And you know, we're happy to share our documents, happy to, we've learned so much from others we're very eager to help and share our information and our experience with others as well as a result. So I guess that's our short uh, summary because I could have talked about this for a couple of hours. So.